Fabio, you started this rookie season of MotoGP as a teenager, of course, but you got your first pole last time out, youngest ever to do so in Jerez, and it's great for us. But how are you living it? How much are you enjoying this time? Well, for sure, was uh, not expecting pole position in, in Jerez. The goal was to be on the... Every time is maximum P9 will be great, you know, uh, third, first row. But at the end, when I do 36-8, I thought that maybe it can be a first row. And uh, I crossed the line, two minutes remaining, I was first. And normally when Mark put the new tire, I thought, okay, he will smash that time. And at the end, he made a mistake and I still have the post position. So for me, it was amazing to get, to get that pole and also to, to have this record of uh, younger pole position. Yeah, and then to start the race alongside Mark on that front row in Spain, how special was that moment? For me, it was really special because the first um, six laps, I think, was uh, Franco and Mark was really close, and I was, let's say, strong on the last sector. So I was not like with them, but arriving to the last sector, I was like uh, all all three together. And uh, after six laps, Franco struggled a little bit. I overtake him, and uh, this moment I feel really strong. And uh, fortunately, happened what what happened. But uh, I enjoy a lot this race to see Mark over more than half of race. You look devastated back in the garage afterwards. That must that feeling must have been awful. Yeah, of course. You know when you um, at that moment was you know so painful to to break uh, small small things on the bike that cost a lot. So um, yes, at that moment was unfortunately uh, one of the worst moments of my career. But when you think about it, we are fighting for the top position. So yeah. at the end, um, if you think we are fighting like for the top 10 in uh, Austin and in, uh, in Argentina, and there we were fighting for top position. So and a podium. Do you think it yeah. could have been a podium? I think so. I don't want to, to tell it, but uh, <laughs> I was quite comfortable on the, yeah. um, on the bike during the, um, all the Jerez uh, weekend. And uh, tw yes, half of the race was, was good. So. I think uh, could be a, um, a top five finish. And that's just in your fifth season in the World Championship. And you're battling with Marc Marquez, uh, the head of a Spanish Grand Prix. Can you believe it? Well, for me, we made a, a big step in, in Jerez. Yeah. Uh, this year, we made uh, two big ones. was one in the test in Qatar and one during this, this GP. But also during the race, you know, I don't have it. I don't know if it was the adrenaline of seeing Mark during the race, or we found like two tenths um, on the pace and was not really on the limit. It was two tenths that was really easy to do. And uh, that's the first time that happened to me that I found something really big during, during the race. And then in the test, you were fastest. Coming here to your home Grand Prix, what's the feeling coming here to Le Mans? Well, first of all, you know, when you finish uh, like uh, what this kind of race during the sun and you have Monday test is always positive. Yeah. And also we, we have been working on some part of the bike and on the last uh, session we make, uh, let's say, qualifying laps was really good. And uh, of course, we arrive here on really good confidence, home GP. Uh, we can hear already the... I'm going to say, the, you can hear the campsite the already lively. Yes, is there any pressure from, from the fans? Well, at the moment, no. I think it's more motivation, you know, but uh, you need to be, to be careful because sometimes you have motivation, stress, so you need to find the, the balance of, uh, of this and don't be stressed. What does Le Mans mean? It's such a historic, evocative name in the whole of motorsports. What does it mean to you? Well, for the first thing is that uh, we have only one home GP and he's here in Le Mans, so for me that's the, the most special thing of, of this track. And of course, uh, for me it's like a historic track, you know, 24 hours of, of Le Mans with cars, with motorcycle. So I think it's quite a legendary place here. I think it's legendary in the campsites. Have you ever been out to one of these campsites? Uh, no, no, don't. no. <laughs> don't bother. You might not ever come back. No, no. I think uh, half of these people on Sunday are sleeping and not watching the race. <laughs> I'm sure if you are starting from pole position, they'll definitely be watching the race. And that's possible because I remember here, 2015, pole position, Moto3. You'd already won in 2014 in the Junior World Championship. What do you remember of that time, back in the Moto3 class on pole in front of your home fans? Well, first of all, it was really tricky condition. Start to rain uh, over the, 
the first minutes of the qualifying. So I think it was one lap, straight and one lap. And we, we make pole position, but I say, OK, I make one more lap. And when I make the first corner, it was raining and I crash over 200 kilometers per hour. But I still got the pole position. So for me, it was the, yes, one of the best moments. So get pole position in the home GP, I think, is, is the, the best place to do it. But it became after a pole position in Jerez as well. I, I forget you this see one. What I'm, see what <laughs> I'm saying here, Fabio? Yeah, but I think it's not the, the same uh, <laughs> category. So, yeah, but, you know, I think uh, the goal of every rider is to be as front as possible. And uh, we did really well in Jerez. So I think here we, we have a good bike. I've, I've seen, I look like uh, five years uh, in the past, all the Yamaha was, was really good. So, yes, I think we, we can do a good result also here. We hope so. I want to take you back, though, to 2015. 2014, you were 14, 15, winning the Junior World Championship for the second time. And you came into this championship and people were talking about you as the title contender. And it was the great future ahead of you. But we know since then you've had a different team every year, a different motorcycle every year. You've changed categories. Back then, sitting on pole at your home Grand Prix. Would you imagine being in this position where you are now? Well, of course not. Uh, you know, was the was the goal to be in the MotoGP, of course. But uh, also when I'm looking in 2016, that was the worst year of my yeah. career. And, and never expect like three years after this year, I will be in MotoGP and already had uh, one pole position. So for me is uh, hard working. You know, the, my family, my friends were, were there. So I think, yeah, it's, it's good to, to have um, a strong uh, mental, no? To, yeah. to be here in MotoGP and I think it's important. Because I think we always knew you had the talent. We saw it when you won here in the Junior World Championship. We saw you when you won that championship. But what has it taken? Who has it taken to help get you to this position? Because it's not been an easy path. Yes, it's true that uh, 2015, half of the season was good after we, we decided to change uh, team. So let's say 2015 that the second part was quite difficult. We try many things for, for Honda mm. and I get uh, injured in my foot. I missed uh, six races yeah. and uh, 2016 was totally a disaster. And uh, yes, where we start really to, to, to get up was with uh, speed up. Yeah. yeah, this team was for me really good. Uh, the team was no pressure on me. Even when I was P28 in the qualifying in, in Argentina, the Luca tell me, no worries, keep working and you, you will arrive. And I think what, we need, what I need like a rider is to have, uh, let's say, people around me who don't uh, make me pressure. So I can work, let's say, with, um, with let's say, calm, no? Yeah. To, to be calm, to don't stress. And uh, that's what's happened also this year. All the team is really calm. Uh, no pressure on me and, and I'm doing well. Yeah, it's a brand new team. Again, another new team for you. But I don't know, something seems to have clicked already. I, I read Wilco Zielenberg, the team manager, saying they're just letting you be you, be natural on the bike. Does it, is that what you need, do you feel? Yeah, yeah, of course. And um, I think uh, Wilco, all my crew, is uh, helping me to, to have, let's say, what kind of, of work, what I'm doing with my crew chief is like we're not trying many things on the bike. We are trying, but small things. And from Qatar to now, for sure, is big change on the bike. But we never make crazy, thing, crazy things on the bike. And um, every time I'm on the bike, I'm enjoying. And I think when you enjoy is the, when the results come. And also don't think about uh, one precise position. When you say about being calm, is that what the tattoo is about? No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, this one is... Uh, <laughs> But so is that because someone said something or? No, it was, <laughs> we just see a tattoo and I mean, OK, let's do that. So oh, really? <laughs> was the moment. It's not a big statement to the, to the media or anything? No, 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 of course not, of course. <laughs> it was just, uh, yeah, let's say, f funny tattoo, this one. Yeah, you enjoyed that. That's good, yeah. to, that's good to know. Um, you moved to Spain when you were young. How old were you, seven, six, seven, seven? No, no, yeah, I moved to the, let's say, championship when I was seven. Yeah. But then you, you spent a lot of time, you speak fluent Spanish. And I just wonder, we're in France now. 
But do you feel the Spanish program or the, the system has helped you? If you'd have stayed in France, do you think you would be here in MotoGP now? Well, at that time was the best choice to go in Spain. You know, in, in France, you should have like uh, 12 years old to start in the 50cc. In Spain was seven. So also in France was like 10 riders for one race. And in Spain, they have like more than 50. Yeah. So um, over 50 riders, for sure, there is a strong one. And uh, from seven to 14 into the sev, for me, was the, the best where I learned a lot, you know, racing with uh, everybody, to be, to be aggressive, to have uh, a lot of race. Unfortunately, we made a lot of kilometers with my dad at that time, but uh, I think uh, that paid at where we are now. Yeah, I'm sure. I just wonder because Joan Zarco, who also has been a rookie sensation, he also has gone a, a different, it's been hard to do it from France. You have to go, he was in Italy or wherever, you have to go to different places. For me, that for me was uh, was the good choice. You know, we we have been uh, I've been racing with not in the same category, but was Alex Rins, um, Vierge, was Arenas also. And uh, when we look at the Sev, everyone who have been fighting on the Sev are now in the World Championship. So I think it's not casualty that uh, there is more than. I don't know, more than 20 Spanish riders in the World Championship now. Because of the level? Yeah, for me the level, what the, the structure of... Um, they have a lot of track, everyone... The passion in, in Spain for the motorcycle is really big. And uh, I think that that's what makes the difference between Spain and, and France. Just because you started in the World Championship when you were 15, a special rule was made yeah. for you. I want to know... Because that's only five, well, four years ago, really. Yeah, Fifth five. season. Yeah. Fifth yeah, season yeah. that you're in now. So who were you trying to emulate as a rider growing up? Who, were your, who was your racing hero? Because we look at you on the bike and the style to me says a bit more Lorenzo, that kind of thing. Was it, was it Jorge? Yeah, let's say everyone also now in, we have a, a coach on the, in the team and they say that was really smooth like like Jorge. Yeah. For sure, my idol at that time was everybody. I think uh, Rossi, Marquez, Pedroza, Lorenzo. But it uh, looks like um, in Moto3 I was really aggressive. And when I moved to Moto2, it was quite smooth. OK, on the braking, the bike was sliding a lot, but um, was quite smooth into the, into the corners. And in MotoGP, it's even more smooth. So. They compare me a little bit with, uh, with yoga. So uh, what I want to know is, is that something you worked on or is that come naturally to you? For me, come naturally. When I'm riding on the bike, it looks like I'm, I'm really aggressive, like I'm really on the limit. But even when I'm looking like uh, in the past, the um, Jerez GP in the beginning looks like is looks easy, but yeah. is, is not. <laughs> <laughs> you make it look easy though, Fabio. You're I, enjoying yourself. You're yeah, enjoying yeah, this lot. time. Yeah, for me, it's the, now the best moment of of my career when I'm enjoying a lot. And uh, it's not only part of, of, you know, of riding, but we are enjoying everyone on the team. I think uh, that's what, that what makes me happy, is uh, f seeing the team also enjoying that uh, all the team is happy and makes me more happy also. We're happy watching you. The fans are happy back home. I'm sure they're going to be happy <laughs> with you this weekend. You keep enjoying yourself, Fabio. Yeah. And all the good things will come we, to you. We cross the fingers. <laughs> Yeah, and don't shh. No, no, of course not. You can keep talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Thank All you very much. Thank you. Thank you.